So, people, big news in street news. Right? Big news in street news. So, anybody that's followed the situation with King Von, Oblock, all of that stuff, okay? You will know that back in the day, when King Von caught his, uh, his major murder case, his main body, okay? He caught his case with a gentleman known as Big Mike, all right? So, this, this fella. Hang on. This fellow right here. Big Mike, Michael Wade, um, him and King Von were were essentially um, on trial together for murder. Uh, I believe Von got acquitted. Uh, Big Mike, now it was always a little bit unclear what was going on. He was charged with aggravated battery with a firearm and got 28 years. Uh, at least that's what it says on, on Reddit. Um, but essentially the whole story essentially was inspiration for King Von's song, Why He Told, because King Von, uh, sorry, Big Mike had allegedly uh, mentioned that Von was actually uh, the shooter. So let me see if I can pull up the testimony. I I've got a vintage video on this uh, of my one of my own videos where I kind of broke this down. Let me just see if I can pull this up for you guys. Hmm. So look, let's check this out real quick. Let's do a quick react reaction. All right. Day party is taking place in Englewood, Chicago, on the 5700 block of South LaSalle Street. That? And in attendance at this party are four men. A man named Malcolm Stuckey, who's chilling at this party with two unnamed friends of his. And also at the party is Davon Bennett, better known nowadays as King Von, the rapper from Chicago's O Block. Now, a serial killer, the demon from O Block, you know who we're talking about in this bitch. At a certain point during this party, Malcolm and his homies are steady eyeballing King Von, who decides at this point to briefly leave the party. He goes away and allegedly gets his homie, Michael Wade, AKA Big Mike. Now, now Big this Mike- is who we're talking about, Big Mike, okay? This is a gentleman who has just got out of prison. He's just been released and uh, he's causing a real stir. Wade, AKA Big Mike. Now, Big Mike later told the police that he had gone to this party with King Von with the intention of acting as muscle for Von who had planned to confront the person who had been mean mugging him. And when Von and Big Mike got back to the party around 45 minutes later, they parked up in an alleyway. Allegedly at this point, they both got out with loaded guns and proceeded to the front porch of the property where they opened fire on Malcolm Stuckey and the two other men. Apparently they ended up firing over 20 shots. Malcolm Stuckey Stucky was unfortunately fatally wounded in the head. Meanwhile, the two other men attempted to flee, one into the house and the other down the street. However, unfortunately, once again, both were hit by gunshots, but ultimately they both survived. At this point, allegedly, Von and Big Mike ran back to their car and fled the scene. But of course, this was a serious charge that neither of them could run from for long. And within a few weeks, they were both in custody. Big Mike was charged first with murder and two counts of attempted murder. And within two weeks, King Von is picked up on the same murder and double attempted murder charges. However, during the process of being arrested, questioned and processed by the cops, Big Mike made one big mistake. According to the Chicago Drill subreddit, Shyrakology, whilst being questioned by the cops, Mike apparently admitted letting off shots, but suggesting that he was not the one who did the killing, inferring that Von was indeed the true murderer. Now, now this is where it all went wrong, okay? This is where a big mistake was made. Allegedly, and, and this is this is Reddit rumor, but this is allegedly what happened. We're going to find out whether or not this was true. Allegedly, Big Mike had made a statement to the police basically saying, like, I let off shots, but it was Von that killed him. That's what they say. Meanwhile, Von did not say a word to police. And in the end, after everything played out, Von, because he didn't say a word, ended up getting off because there was no actual evidence against him. Whereas Big Mike... He, they, they could essentially prove he was at the scene because he made a statement that I was there letting off shots, but it wasn't me that killed him. He put himself in it. But suggesting that he was not the one who did the killing, inferring that Von was indeed the true murderer. Now, it's possible that this comment just started out as a simple incriminating slipper, which Mike was just trying to correct by suggesting that he wasn't the killer. But we would later find out that apparently Mike was in talks with the cops to flip on Von and snitch on him directly being the killer. But meanwhile, over in the other interview room, Von had decided to completely keep his mouth shut, not saying a word to the feds, choosing instead to sit in his cell and await his trial. And so with these numerous charges stacked on top of each other, we're talking a murder, double attempted murder and gun charges, it was looking like Vaughn might be facing over a hundred years in jail. So the murder, say they want 20 years for the murder. Say I get found good, they give me 20 years for the murder. Plus the gun, um, that's, been lost. that's 21 years. So that's 41 years, that's for the murder. And I got two attempt murders. I said they give me 21 years, 85 for, for one attempt in out of the attempt. 
21, 42. Say that's 42 plus the next other uh, two times 21. I mean, that's a lot of fucking years. So Von sat in jail for an excruciating three and a half years, just waiting around for his murder case to finally go to court. The delay was partly due to the feds struggling to find witnesses and the murder weapon, which apparently didn't surface until over a year after the incident took place. However, once the case did go to trial, King Von ended up being the beneficiary of perhaps one of the biggest accidental finesses in Chicago crime history. It's crazy, really. The King Von murder trial out. didn't go. I mean, when when you think about it, like obviously Von's no longer with us, but and so much has happened over the years. But it's like it's crazy how everything comes back around. I mean, this trial, this whole situation, we're talking way back in what twenty twenty. I think Von was sat down facing this trial from 2014 to 2017. So he was in jail. They took him off the streets for that whole period of time. And then he ends up beating that and coming back in 20, 2018. That's when he came back on the streets and became a rapper. But like, that's that's the craziest thing. That all of this has happened. Vaughn has come out, become one of the biggest rappers in rap history, been killed. Three, what, three years has passed since Von died, and now Big Mike's back out. Like, it's actually crazy how this has all come back around. Exactly as the prosecutors were years expecting. In the now, it had turned out that Big Mike had indeed cut a deal with the feds to flip on Von and try and pin the murder charge on him. But in an explosive last minute twist, Mike reneged on the deal and refused to spill the beans on his slime. As a result, the court ended up finding Mike guilty with the judge slapping a hefty additional sentence on Mike as punishment, with Mike reportedly getting 16 years just for the murder and another 12 purely for punishment for backing out of the snitch deal. 28 years in total. But as things continued, the prosecution's case against Vaughn begun to unravel. Bear in mind, it had taken prosecutors over a year to find the murder weapon, and when it did finally surface, Vaughn had already been sitting in jail for this charge for quite some time. So with him in jail, once this weapon does turn up, it made it even harder for prosecutors to try and pin this gun on him. Meanwhile, the prosecutors had originally been counting on a couple of witnesses to try and at least pin Vaughn to the crime scene, but in the end, witnesses ended up not coming to trial, leaving the prosecutors empty-handed, and Vaughn Von's involvement in this killing in doubt. And this is a fact which is even more sensational when you look at some of the lyrics that King Von has dropped in the years that have followed this case. For example, on the song What's Next with Jizzle Bucks, Von drops lyrics that seem to reference the 28 year sentence that Big Mike got for this murder, calling him out for talking reckless and even suggesting that maybe a witness was killed. He said he told on me before he got a longer sentence, I think they gave him 28, he'd rather talk than listen. Bitch was the only one that told, they killed the other witness, now I'm just balling, I'm just flexing like my OT necklace that is some wild shit now look we haven't got to go into von's rap career because you already know that story but obviously this this whole situation was made famous by king von's song why he told now he's he's talking about big mike in this song man i don't know why he told that boy was realer than a bitch man i don't know how he folded he could have hit him with a script but he ain't sugarcoat it he told him what he told him that was my brother he bogus gonna act like i don't know him bro i'm getting lit just listening to these lyrics man just rapping these lyrics bro but this is legit this is legit okay this is about big mike all right this is what it says king von had a friend michael wade shot up a party together due to some beef they were arrested days later both were facing life with a charge of first degree murder and two attempted murders but wade ratted and told the police everything while von kept his mouth closed stayed solid the whole time after three and a half years wade was sentenced to 28 and von was set three <sighs> crazy crazy all right I would have bonded you out. You would have stayed at my house. We would have figured it out. You took the easiest route. I wonder when he getting out. Who he gonna hang with now? I'll tell you who he's gonna hang with. I'll tell you who he's gonna hang with. DJ UTV. He's out. Uh, Von's no longer alive. He's gonna be hanging out with DJ UTV doing 128,000 views in 15 hours. So, Big Mike from O Block. He's been let out. They done released a demon. They released a demon. Big Mike finna be released from prison in a couple of days. Do you think he's gonna get a chance to clear up his name? They done released the demon, okay? He's just gonna come home. Bro, look, they predicted everything. He's gonna come home and hit every interview circuit. Say cheese, DJU, Cam Capone, and deny ever snitching. End of story, okay? They even done written the script. This is two months ago. They even done written the script of what DJU and Big Mike are gonna be saying in their interview, okay? So let's find out whether they actually stuck to the script, okay? Whether he stuck to the script. I have not watched this. I've been saving this. Watch with you you folks, with you phone M, all right? So let's check it out. Let's see what Big Mike took the easiest route. Who would have figured it out? You know what I'm saying? Let's hear what he has to say. DJ, you go crazy. Ooh. DJ UTV, let them know who we got in the building. Big Mike from the O. Big dog. Big dog. Back down. 
Did all my 10 years, you know. Thought I wasn't going to get out. You see me on this couch. Big Mike, what you on, gang? Shit cool, man. Just, you know, trying to give everybody what they want. Yeah. Y'all want to hear from me. I waited a little bit. Yeah. I'm on that though. Yeah, not only is this a uh, a DJU TV exclusive, a Chiracology exclusive, this is a worldwide premiere. You know that. Because I did my little research and I couldn't find no other interview, not no jail interview, no phone interview. You feel me? I want f the nigga. Hey, listen, I I'm not surprised that Big Mike never did an interview uh, outside of with the feds. But, um,. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? Who knows how he got out so soon? They're saying he got out on appeal. You got to ask yourself, how'd he get out so soon, man? 28 years, how'd he get out so soon? I want to fuck with nigga. Yeah. Everybody trying to get rich. See, I'm trying to get rich too. Hey, listen, the best thing he could do is start rapping. That's all I got to say, man. Best thing Big Mike could do right now, drop a little mixtape, drop a little EP. You know what I'm saying? Drop a little, drop a little something, something. I feel like that's going to be the wave for Big Mike. That's a fact. So well, that's what we own. Well, as far as Chicago drill stories are concerned, I done heard a lot of them. You know. Now look, this is only part one, so realistically, we're not, we're probably not going to get the meat and potatoes in this interview. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. But we have got 14 minutes. Let's just see. Let's see if there's any tidbits, and I'm gonna find some info while we go. Saying we done had a, a plethora of them here, right here on this couch. Right. Um. But before we go any further, I think this might be one of the hardest, one of the craziest, one of the. You know what I mean? That's what it is. I think I think this might be one of the biggest. That's what it is. Hey man, you know we, that we ain't gonna waste no more time. Big Mike, tell us where you from. I'm from the O, man. Born and raised, man. So here's the crazy thing, right? He's from the O. He's from O Block. He's infamously got the big O Block tattoo on his chest, like a lot of the other, uh, a lot of the other Chicago rappers. Let me see if I got a picture of that. That that chest. Pause. Um. But, like, this is the thing. He's from the O, but the crazy thing, right? Let me see if I can find a picture. The infamous, infamous O block tat on his chest. You see that? That's got hurt. Bro, I ain't trying to put on a seatbelt after I've had that tattoo done. But for real, he's infamously from O block, but he is apparently FBG Wooski's brother, who is big op to King Von. You know what I'm saying? But hey, he's still living. But um, the interesting thing, before we go any further with the interview, I just want to touch on something that I think is quite interesting. Like, how the hell did he get out so early on 20, 28 years? Well, apparently, he won his appeal. He got his sentence reduced from 28 years to 11 years. And he already served eight. So he got out very soon, right? So I, I don't think he was convicted of murder. I think he was convicted of aggravated battery and discharge of a firearm. And I think it was the maybe the gun enhancement that got him so many years originally. Um, but obviously, the fact that I guess he wasn't convicted of m actual murder um, was like due to the fact that realistically it was probably Vaughn. Um, but like, there's a couple of comments here. It's pretty crazy how so many people beat impossible murder cases in Chicago or have killed somebody and the police know they did it, but they don't arrest them because they know they'll beat the case. And you know what I'm saying? Then uh, that's why many police officers in Chicago quit because no matter how many times they arrest and catch these guys, they're going to be out the same day. Uh, which is crazy. Um, he wasn't even charged with murder. It was possession of a weapon used in a crime. I mean, that's just that's just a comment. But I, I guess it wasn't full-blown murder that he was convicted of, and that's how he got out. But hopefully he's going to break it down for us a little bit more. That was, that's really my shit. You feel me? A lot of my us, you know, claiming they from over there and shit. There was no way around when I was in there. Like, me and my brothers come from dirty. You know, they just branched off. I've been there my whole life like it ain't not one person in that bitch don't know my name like for sure like right. old ladies little kids any more about so when you say the oh we talking about old block correct old block wig city parkway gardens whatever you call it but well, all the names it used to be before it was old block for sure so can you tell us what it was like for, for yourself growing up in old block I mean, at first, it was, you know, like the school and shit like that, like I always was a badass little nigga. Like everybody used to be like, man, Diane, go get your son. He doing this, he doing that. And then I just had a conversation with Durkey from O Block, and it's crazy to hear the stories of dudes growing up in this environment. You know, look, I'll be I'll keep it real. It's not my environment. I didn't grow up in a place like O Block, but like 
it sounds like that really forms you, that really shapes you, you know what I'm saying, growing up in these places where there's a lot of danger, but also a lot of culture, you know what I'm saying, it really makes you who you are, man. And then she got to having the other boys, it was like, it was, it was over with, like, we started running through that bitch, we was in fights, like, almost every day, getting suspended from school almost, like, every day, teachers calling my mama almost every day, you know what I'm saying, getting suspended one shit, you know, she got to come up to the school, she beat them, man, but... Growing up in that bitch, it was just like, you know, everybody be saying, like, you got a choice. You got a choice. But what if we ain't know about that choice? You feel me? Like, ain't none of us know we had no motherfucking choice because we was going off of what we were seeing. She, we weren't in the career watching no motherfucking TV, watching basketball and shit like that. We was watching what the niggas doing on that block. You know what's crazy, man? This really drives it home to me is, that, like, you know, he's talking about being a young, impressionable man growing up in O Block. And realistically, he's talking about having nothing but bad influences around him and being driven to, you know what I'm saying, in, indulge in very negative behaviors as a young age. He's saying we didn't even have anything to watch. We, we didn't even watch sports or TV growing up. And I know people want to hate on what I do, but, like, I'm trying to do these drill stories and actually give, like, genuine positive, not, not necessarily positive, but like, I'm trying to put a a sobering, honest, and, like, responsible perspective on these stories. I'm not just trying to do, oh, King Von's a serial killer, bodies, bodies, yeah, yeah, he smoked this person with smoking tuca, yeah, smoking tuca. Like, I'm trying to be, like, genuinely, like, yo, this is nothing to glorify, this is nothing to glamorize. Like, the things that King Von said in his life were very negative, and that's not something to be replicated. And, you know, uh, it's a long shot, man, but if there's young people growing up in O-Block and they got access to YouTube and they can watch one of my videos and realize, you know what, maybe, maybe gangbanging ain't that cool. Like, maybe being on the block slanging slanging rocks and smoking tuca and shooting at your ops ain't actually cool like i hope that i can have a positive impact positive influence if the only exposure you've got to the drill situation or the drill scenarios that are going on in your area are the music that glorifies this stuff you know what i'm saying you you're, you're thinking that stuff's cool you want to grow up and slide like von you know i'm saying sliding every day but if you watch one of my videos bro it ain't cool like, I'm not making it look cool. I don't think you're going to watch one of my videos. If you watch to the very end, no one's watching to the end of my Jacksonville gang war video and thinking, that looks so cool. I want to be involved in that situation. Like, you're thinking, that's deadly. That was dangerous. I do not want to be involved. I want to stay away from that lifestyle. Let me be a doctor or a lawyer. Yeah, so, growing up, it was like, it was rough, though. You feel me? My mama, she was a single mama and shit like that. You feel me? She was raising all of us, trying to feed us, put clothes on our backs and shit. You know what I'm saying? And we, you know, we used to run through the hood just beating on niggas and we used to be dirty and shit. But niggas used to think we was dirty because my mama was fucked up. The whole time my mama wasn't fucked up. We was dirty because we always get our shit dirty because we ain't kept. You know what I'm saying? And this, we come in the crib. She like, oh, bitch, you want to get them clothes dirty? I ain't buying you no more. Type shit. You know what I'm saying? So, so it sounds like you grew up with a single mother? Yeah. Like, you know, at first, like my pops, he be like, he be like in and out of shit like that. Like, Cause he wasn't, you know, he wasn't living where we was living at and shit. But he was all, he was coming around and shit like that. Like he was trying to, you know, come in and try to discipline them off. Like I wasn't trying to hear that shit. How many, how many brothers and sisters you got? See, on my mom's side, I got five brothers and one sister. On my daddy's side, I got another little brother and then two sisters. Okay. You the oldest? Yeah. I'm the oldest on both sides. Okay. So you the oldest out of all of them? I'm the oldest out of all of them. I'm the big brother. Okay. You no, know? For sure. And when we look at your, at, at your brothers on your mama's side, we find out that one of them is Wooski. You know that. Hey, listen, this is where it's about to get murky, bro, because the fact that this guy comes from O-Block and his brother on his mother's side is Wooski, who, if you didn't know, this is the big op. This is the this is literally the guy. Look, I'll keep it real with you. I know a lot of people want to mock Wooski from, uh, from, from uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, from that side to get some shy recology. Right, a lot of people... A lot of people want to want to make fun of Wooski because he got shot in the head, right? All of that stuff. Let me find a picture of Wooski. God damn it! Look, a lot of people want to make fun of Wooski because he got shot in the head. But bro, this is this guy is unkillable, and I'm not trying to make light of no situation. But this guy literally got shot in the head at a funeral, and he's still here to tell the tale. And people want to talk about he's slow, but I've seen interviews of him not looking too slow. I think he's just smoking a lot of lot of dope like a re like the rest of these guys, to be honest with you. Like, I think, you know what I'm saying, you, 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 you hit that many blunts in a day, you're going to be slow. I don't care whether you got shot in the head, shot in the leg. I don't care whether you are for Adderall. You know what I'm saying? Too many blunts will have you moving slow. So, And I know Adam22 and Wooski had a few, uh, had a little back and forth. 
know what I'm saying about some Wooski vibes. But hey, I got nothing but respect for Wooski. This guy's the goddamn, the goddamn GD Terminator, bro. They cannot kill this guy. And I don't condone any sort of violence or killing. I do not. I, I think I want to see Wooski doing music, being successful, doing all of that stuff, bro. But like, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. This is literally the guy that the O block, the block that Big Mike is from. His brother is. They've been trying to kill this dude for for damn near two decades. And the fact that they're brothers is crazy. So I got to know what he's got to say about this. That's my blood. Like, you know what I'm saying? He came up under me and shit. You know, he used to watch the shit that I used to be doing and shit. But he, he, he always had his own little man and shit. He always used to be his own person and shit. Like, he wasn't no follower or none of that shit. Like, Liberal always been, like, himself at all times. Like, he wasn't changing for nobody. He wasn't doing shit niggas was doing. He was doing him since he was a shorty. Like, it just, he, he, he came up. He, he, it was, he, he was aggressive. He, it's, it's like in his blood. Like, mm -hmm. it's like all my mama's sons. Like, you can't find out one of my mama kids that's got a shit. Okay. Nothing. Nobody, no nothing. Like, if it's there, we gonna go there. Like, right. We don't get no. It is what it is. Shit, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. That's why everybody stay against shit like that. Look, this is the thing, right? Look, I don't know. I don't know the full story. All right. I don't know the full story. When it comes to Wooski, bro, they say he really out here doing stuff. Okay. Look, this is from Shyrac or Shyrac hits. Wooski arrested, arrested for an alleged murder. He apparently has 35 other mugshots. So he was arrested for first-degree murder in, in 2015, all right? And Vaughn was in jail that whole period of time. And he's still out here, bro. He's still free. He's not even in jail now. There's other posts that float around. And I'm not I'm not condoning any of this information. I'm not backing this up. I've not had a, had a chance to do a full, full breakdown. But there's this one rumor about this guy called Reezy, a 29-year-old Wick City, which is the former name for Oblox, and he got shot during a big fist fight between Parkway and STLEBT, so the 63rd, basically, GD's gang. Back in 2010, Woosty would have been like 11 or 12. Now, a lot of people say he didn't do this. I don't want to say either which way. But there's hella murders that they're saying Woosky is associated with. Toon, they're saying it's possible. Hell Rail, what do you guys think? He'll send two or three bodies. They're saying Wooski's really like that. Uh, now, look, I don't know for sure. Okay, but they're saying that this guy, Reezy. Let me see if I can get any more info on that. That's cr It's just one of the crazy stories, right? Like, there's a lot. There's a lot of, of, of like, commentary about Wooski and the supposed bodies that he has. People saying he's really like that. And so he is, realistically, Wooski is realistically Oblock's biggest nightmare. Like, I'm not glamorizing it or glorifying it. You know what I'm saying? This is the guy that, that all the O-Block dudes that crashed out, all the guys that killed Duck, all the guys that shot up that funeral. They were desperate to get this guy out of here and they couldn't do it. He says, he says, ah, bro, it's crazy. And that's, his, that's Big Mike's brother and Big Mike caught the murder case with King Von. It's crazy. So, so do you and, um, what's he share the same father? Or just the same mother? No, we ain't got the same father. They father, you know, passed away back in like 94 or some shit, 95 okay. or some shit like that. Okay. Probably later than that. I'm not sure though, but it was like right after they was born and shit. Like, he ain't got killed and shit. Right. So was like, Wooski always like bad as hell? Like even like when he was a child? Hell yeah, he was worse than me. How much y'all age difference? I'm 33, Wooski 27. Okay. So, you know. What's that? Six years? So this is the dude. So they're saying, Woos they're talking about Wooski catching bodies at 11 or 12. This guy's his, Big Mike is six years older than him. So we're talking. Imagine that. Imagine that you're, imagine you're eighteen and you're in the streets and it's like that, and your damn near eleven, twelve year old brother's done caught a body. Imagine that your twelve year old brother and you're eighteen. Your twelve year old brother got more bodies than you, bro. It's crazy. That was it, Because yeah, somebody told me, bro. Um, somebody told me like, uh, man, if y'all think Wooski crazy, who y'all think he got it from? Yeah, he Talk got it from yourself. me. Because you see me doing all that crazy ass shit, coming in Korea with guns and shit. He used to be stealing them and shit, you know, taking guns outside and shit. I remember the nigga walked up on me with a big ass shotgun. And I'm like, man, this, and he was like, he was a, a shorty shorty. And I'm like, where the fuck you get that from? I said, I just sold this from the BDs on 71st. I'm like, man, what the <laughs> fuck is he doing? He just said, bro, I need to rewind to that. He just said that he's done seen his little brother Wooski pull up with a shotgun that he stole from the BDs on 71st. Walked up on me with a big ass shotgun. And I'm stealing them and shit, you know, taking guns outside and shit. I remember the nigga. Walked up on me with a big ass shotgun. I'm like, man, this. And he was like, he was a, a shorty, shorty. And I'm like, where the fuck you get that from? I said, I just sold this from the BDs on seven first. I'm like, man, what the <laughs> fuck is you doing, man? Like, he always been bad, busting niggas' head, wrapping bike chains around niggas' necks. Like, he always been there because, you know. He was busting people's heads and wrapping bike chains around people's necks. Bro, Wooski, bro, 
Wooski is the guy in Chicago people really need to be talking about. Like, I, I might have to do a Wooski video. Niggas usually like try to play with him and shit. Like, he was always that one that was going to get his leg back. You fuck with him, he want his leg back. He don't matter what he got to go through to get his leg back. He going to get his leg back. And once he get his leg back, he done. You know what I'm saying? He always been like that since a shorty and shit. And at first it was like irritating as hell because you want to chase this nigga all day till you get your leg back. But then, like when I started going up, I'm like, all right, I see what's going on. He ain't let nobody do shit to him and get away with it. Mm -hmm. That's how he always been. That little nigga been bad as hell, man. He worse than all of us. Like, he got it. Yeah. So, you know, when the fans look at your name and, you know, who you're related to, who you affiliated with, right. they be like, damn, how's this Wooski blood brother? But this King Von rap. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly the thing. That's the thing that nobody understands. How is this Wooski's blood brother? And King Von caught the case with Mike from Oblock, and Mike's got the big Oblock tattoo. I mean, how does that even work when he goes home and chills with his brother? His brother's talking about we just robbed the BDs on seventy first of a shotgun. And big Mike's from hanging out in Oblock with the BDs. Yeah. Like, how is he from Oblock, but Wooski from sixty third? Because we the had Wooski on our couch. We asked him he was from Oblock. He said, "Hell no, nah, he did not be from Oblock." A lot of people say you're from Oblock. Troll it. Hey, bro. Is that what you spent like your early childhood years at? <laughs> Damn. Listen, this is what I mean. Like, people would be saying Wooski slow, but I think it's that that shit in his hand that making him slow. I don't even know if it's the bullet. I don't even know if it's the bullet, bro. I think that shit in his hand is what's making him slow. <laughs> well, slow down, man. Okay, cool. He ain't. Okay. He ain't. I, you know, coming up, coming up as 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 kid. Well, I was a teenager. He was still a kid and shit. He used to, you know what I'm saying, be running around out there and shit, but he ain't fuck with them shorties over there. He used to go down on 71st, so he used to go on 63rd, Everhard, St. Lawn, shit down there and shit, and hang with little niggas over there and shit, because I got cousins that's, that be on the blocks and shit. So he used to go down there and fuck with the family, because every time he was on the block, he was fighting somebody. Every day. Every single day. They're like, man, go get your brother. He over there, be woo woo So he be woo woo ass. Like, damn, what the fuck is you doing? Like, but it's always because somebody did something to him. He ain't never going to do nothing to nobody that ain't did nothing to him. Right. Then you ain't did nothing to him, he ain't going to fuck with you. You do something to him. Yo ass might as well go hide somewhere because he ain't going to stop. Hey, this is the thing, bro. Look, I do not condone any of the actions that happened between the BDs and the GDs in the gang war. But Wooski's the goddamn Terminator. Like, Wooski's that... Do you remember that scene in... What's it? Uh, Like, there's that scene where the dude gets shot in Terminator, the, that dude, and the bullet just melts through him. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm talking about? T the T nine one thousand or some shit, bro. I ain't trying to get copy struck with this one, but you know the bit I'm talking about, bro. This this be Wooski right here. This be Wooski. This this what be happening when they shoot Wooski. That's Wooski. Bro, shit ain't touching, bro. Let me just, you're just gonna roll another blunt and keep it moving, bro. That's the real whiskey right there. Crazy. But for real, man, like, he just, look, I would not want to be in a beef with whiskey. They're saying he, Big Mike's saying he will do anything to get his lick back. You can shoot this guy in the head and he is coming for his lick back with the Ross Clark bike chain. Bro, I'm terrified of whiskey. That's how you is. But that whole situation, like, you know, I've been, you know, hearing this shit, fans trying to figure out how it's on from. O-Block and he from 63rd and shit. First of all, I got locked up in 2009 on the motherfucking uh, armed robber. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Lil' Bro was a real kid when I left. You know what I'm saying? I was full of flares, like, all the way in that shit. Like. But as I was locked up, he became more and more into the street shit. Now he's starting to play with guns and shit. Now I'm talking to him on the phone. And I'm... So Big Mike was already, like, incarcerated a lot while Wooski was growing up. I suppose they didn't really have, like, that, that close relationship. And, like, obviously he's turning up saying that he's running off with the shotguns from the op block and shit, but, like, it probably didn't really set in how much of a demon Wooski was to Big Mike until later on. And, obviously, Big Mike's fighting cases. you got other shit to worry about than what his little brother's doing. Yeah, what you want when you talking about shit? You know, your homie, no man, ass and shit. So I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> Imagine that. You're, you've got your brother. He's six years younger than you. He's saying, what you want? You're calling him from jail saying, what you want? And you're like, I'm getting on your homie and them ass. I'm on your homies. I'm literally trying to kill your friends. Like, chill, bro. And he's like, yeah, man, them niggas bitches who out the bam. So now this the, this, he, this the growing up Wooski. So I'm like, damn, what the? So now I'm like, kind of like, damn, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? You know what I'm saying? So in 2014, I had came home and shit. And uh, we sat down and we had a talk and shit. And I told him, like, man, you know, this one I was still like in it. You know, I'm a civilian right now. Let the streets know I'm a civilian right now until I get off the road. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? He, uh,
Hey, I saw this clip going viral, man. Let's take that in for another second. No, this one, I was still like in it. I'm a civilian right now. He's saying he's a civilian right now. He's just gotten out of jail, right? He just managed to beat this. He managed to finesse his way out of this 28-year sentence. He got it, got himself out in, what, eight years? When did he get... That would have been, what, 20... That have been 2017 that the trial took place? Damn near... Well, I guess he would have had time served. Eight to ten years. He's a civilian. But look, listen to what he says. Let the streets know I'm a civilian right now. Until I get off the road. Bro, he's going to be sliding. Who's he going to slide on, though? The guy that disrespected him the most, Vaughn, is gone. He beat his case. Or the guy that was dead. Who's he going to slide on, bro? I would say, Big Mike, you should remain a civilian, bro. Just chill out. Like, do, do get your interviews, get your whoops in. And don't go back to the streets, bro. Because the streets ain't been kind to you. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? He, uh... We, when I came home, we had to sit down. We had to sit down and shit, and we was talking and shit, and I was just like, man, look, this is what we're going to do, bro. You feel me? Because I want this shit to die down. Because as soon as I came home, I, you know, my OG phone was ringing off the hook. Everybody calling, man, what you going to do about your little brother? What you going to do about your little brother? You riding with your little brother? You riding with your little brother? All that. And these were my homies, you know what I'm saying, that I grew up with and shit. And I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm going to squash that shit. I'm going to get a little bro off that. You know what I'm saying? We're going to, you know, come to an understanding and shit like that. But it was the understanding that I had with my little brother, like, you know, I ain't going to slide through that. I ain't going to slow on your homies. You feel me? Don't slide. Imagine that you have to have an agreement with your little brother who is six years younger than you that I'm not going to slide on any of your homies. I, I promise, little bro, I'm not going to slide on any of your homies. Been catching bodies since he was 11. I do Don't smoke none of my homies. Don't shoot at none of my homies. You know what I'm saying? And that's how we're going to leave it. You feel me? Because then, if you do, then I got to choose side. And of course, I'm going to choose my brother's side. That's my blood. You feel me? These are my niggas that I grew up with. I don't get no fuck about that when it comes to my blood. You know what I'm saying? Niggas be always asking them dumbass questions like, what was to happen if, you know, if they did something to Wooski? Then all the niggas going to die. That's how that shit go. You feel me? I ain't Hey, listen, you know what I'm saying? That's what you're saying, but people done done stuff to Wooski, all right? Even though he's the Terminator and he's lived through it. Like, you're saying you're going to slide on all these people, bro. Get off parole first. Them niggas that's going to turn on my brother for, for them niggas. You hear? That's my blood brother. Like, I love that nigga to death. Mm -hmm. Like, for real. Like, ain't none of that. Like, nigga, you're going to die. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he just went over there with them niggas and he stopped with them niggas. Hard. It was shit I could do about it. He was full His name was already out there. It was over with. Right. I couldn't get to him in time and, and pull him back towards me and get him back over there and shit. You know what I'm saying? Niggas always used to talk about when I was locked up and shit. Like, just imagine if Wooski was on my block. Well, that's the thing, man. He, what he's talking about is like, the, by that point, he'd already been in jail. He couldn't really help his brother out. And at that point, wooski has got the target on his back. He can't really put the genie back in the bottle when it comes to Wooski basically being the most hated op from 63rd. Like, Wooski has now damn near spent 10 years being the most wanted, the most hated rival from this rival territory that everybody hates there's no real there's no way of reversing that right and even now he's saying that he'll kill for his brother so who knows what's going to happen man but again like i don't i don't want to see any more violence but he needs to, big mike needs to just stick to the whoops you know what i'm saying we've been the most turned in the most turned in the city you know what i'm saying like with Wooski on our block man but that ain't happening Wooski hate bds man like you know what i'm saying bds killed they did like he that shit over with man he ain't doing that man y'all just leave I didn't know that. You hear what he just said? He said he said the BD, so the Black Disciples killed Wooski's daddy. So Wooski's father got killed by Black Disciples. Ain't no way that Wooski is calling a truce and like playing nice with the Black Disciples. Even though Big Mike is from Oblock. The thing that he's not said, and I wouldn't be surprised if he maybe doesn't want to admit this on camera, he's not really he's been talking a lot about being from Oblock and people were from 63rd and St. Lawrence, but he's not really straight up said like I'm a BD. He said Wooski was stealing shotguns from the BDs on 71st. You know, Hugh, Hugh, you're talking about you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. That's facts. Leave him alone, he's going to leave y'all alone. You know what I'm saying? So that was the understanding with us and shit. You know, we came to an understanding and shit. And, you know, when I got locked up, like, you know, Von, them, them were shorties, man. You know what I'm saying? They used to be playing baseball and shit like that. So at that time, he wasn't beefing with them. Like, that beef came after Lil Bro made that computer song, which I was locked up. You feel me? He was locked up because he made it in jail. And then when he got out, when he beat that attempt, that's when he dropped it. And that's when. So he's talking about Wooski's song Computers where he just disses all the BDs, talks about all the dead ops. If you don't know that song, it says Chicago classic Computers. I got on the phone and bro and was like, yeah, you know, yeah, your little brother, he, this the most disrespectful shit I ever heard in my life. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, let me hear a little bit of it. And they played it and I just like, what the f And I called him, I was like, man, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, man, I'm on that. You lock up, shit. It's over with for they got. I couldn't do shit about it. I wasn't out there. That's so why I said it is what it is. Yeah, you know? mm. And then Vaughn, yeah, that's when the, when they beef started, for real. You feel me? So everybody said, he's talking about how's you, you know what I'm saying, from over here, he from over there, this Vaughn, arch enemy and shit like that. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You was cool with Vaughn and shit like that. Like that shit happened when niggas got out. You feel me? Niggas weren't playing with little bro like that, man. No, niggas. So he's saying people weren't really messing with Wooski until Vaughn got out of jail and started beefing with everybody. And that's kind of facts. You know what I'm saying? Listen, that whole 
you know, Man Man from 63rd getting killed. The whole Dooski the Man funeral getting shot up. That's when Wooski got shot in the head. You know what I'm saying? Allegedly, a lot of them men were involved in that. So, I can understand what he's saying, but it's crazy to think that, like, that actually, when you actually think about it, Wooski didn't really become that hated at that level until Von got out of jail. And realistically, Von was the catalyst for a lot of this beef and a lot of this war. Like, Von was a very negative influence in this area. Like, he was causing a lot of pain and a lot of struggle in this area. Like, yes, Big Mike is talking about Wooski being a demon, stealing shotguns off people, and, you know, people on Reddit talking about he's catching bodies at 11. But, like, it really seems like it wasn't until King Von got out, beat this murder, came out all confident and cocky, and really started to try and put his foot on the GDs from 63rd's neck, that things, uh, you know what I'm saying, started started getting really serious, man. And that's crazy to think that, like, Big Mike caught that case with Von and it wasn't really like that. Obviously, they were they were beefing, but it's really the whole Get Back gang and the murder of T-Roy that really sparked off the real deep war. And then you had Wooski making computers. Then you had the Dooski funeral getting shot up. It's just huge escalations, man. And Von was really a central part of all of that. He was scared of him, running from him. Called on my phone. Yeah, your brother just chased me out of McDonald's type shit. I used to be like, shit, what you want me to do? <laughs> so it was always tension with me and niggas on the block anyway. Like, right. you no, know, I didn't beat niggas ass over the on the block and everything. Like, okay. That's blood, you feel me? I'm going against anybody who So Wooski, apparently Wooski was chasing people out of McDonald's. They were giving them the, the, the No Limit Cairo special, chasing them out of the McDonald's. That's crazy. But yeah, so look, that was the, that was the Big Mike interview. I've been excited to check that out. I honestly, I was waiting to jump on stream to, to react to that with you guys. And uh, it's crazy, but that's only part one. So we're going to have a lot more parts. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, the part that we're all waiting for is when he really breaks down the situation with the King Von murder case. And you know that's due to be absolutely crazy. But I'll tap in with you guys when that happens.